So we're starting chapter 10 in uh, 157. So chapter 10 deals with the muscular system, but this part is looking at mainly gross anatomy. Uh, so myology is the study of muscles. So let's first take a look at the types and functions of muscles. Now, when we look at types of muscle tissue, this is actually coming out of chapter four. That's where you can find the notes on the, or uh, in the textbook is where you can find the, the information on this. So uh, first is skeletal muscle tissue. So skeletal muscle tissue shown here is a type of voluntary muscle tissue in muscles attached to bone. All right, so this is what we typically think of as muscle. So it has striations. Now striations are these alternating dark and light lines that we see here. Uh, and these cells are multinucleated. So there's more than one nucleus uh, per cell. And how that occurs is in our development, we start off with a bunch of cells and these cells fuse together. All right, now uh, uh, skeletal muscle tissue needs nerve stimulation to contract. So we need a nerve impulse coming from the brain or the spinal cord in order for those muscles to contract. And so another way to look at uh, skeletal muscle tissue is we can also call it striated voluntary muscle. Uh, so it's under voluntary control and it has striations. The next type of tissue is cardiac muscle tissue. So this is specialized muscle tissue found only in the heart. All right. So uh, another way to look at it is uh, because it also has striations, these don't show up as well as, uh, as skeletal muscle, but it has striations and it's involuntary because we don't constantly think about contracting our heart. So another way to look at it is striated involuntary muscle. So now uh, the thing about uh, cardiac muscle is that it does not need nerve stimulation to contract, but nerve activity can affect its rate. So once again, right, you know, if a bear came in here, my heart rate would go up because I would secrete norepinephrine. But once again, if the bear stopped, took its head off, and hey, it was my buddy Steve again, uh, I would secrete, uh, you know, my parasympathetic division secreting acetylcholine would get my heart rate back down to normal, all right? But un uh, regardless of those situations, my heart will beat intrinsically 60 to 100 times a minute on its own, all right? Some other uh, things that cardiac muscle has that other muscle tissue does not have. One is it has these structures called intercalated discs. So we see those here and here and here. And these are specialized regions of connections between the cardiac cells. They contain desmosomes and gap junctions. And by containing gap junctions, gap junctions allow um, a nerve impulse, or in, in this case, an active potential, to go from one cardiac muscle cell to the next. Because gap junctions, remember, are just like a, a passageway be between these cells. So if we have an impulse that leads to contraction in this cell, it's going to cause an impulse that leads to contraction in the adjoining cell. Uh, also, heart muscle cells are uh, branched. So you can see this one connects to that cell, which connects to that cell, which connects to that cell. So if this guy contracts, it's going to cause all these other cells that it's connected to to contract as well. So these are going to help channel the forces of contraction. And I'm going to come back to that after we talk about what a muscle contraction is later on. Next is smooth muscle tissue. So this is showing uh, smooth muscle tissue. This is a type of involuntary muscle tissue in the walls of hollow viscera. So one of the things that we see with smooth muscle is that it lacks striations. So it doesn't have these alternating dark and light lines. Uh, and another way we can look at it is it's a non-striated involuntary muscle. All right, so no striations and it's involuntary. And as I said, it's found in hollow viscera. So it's like the walls of your urinary bladder, the walls of your stomach, the walls of your smooth, uh, small intestine, walls of your large intestine, walls of your blood vessels, all that has uh, smooth muscle in. And of course, we don't think about contracting our stomach to get uh, food out of it. It's gonna do it involuntarily. Uh, smooth muscle can contract on its own uh, by being stretched, or it can contract by nerve activity. All right, let's look at uh, the functions of muscles. So muscle contractions uh, produce heat, all right? So do contractions, that's gonna produce heat. We know this, if you start exercising, you're contracting those muscles more, you're gonna generate more body heat. So this is gonna help us maintain our body temperature. Uh, muscle contractions also produce movement. We look at skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle produces body movements, also used in breathing. Uh, cardiac muscle is going to move blood, and smooth muscle moves substances most of the time. 
So, you know, we contract smooth muscle, uh, that's gonna move stuff out of our stomach or out of our urinary bladder. But our iris, the color portion of our eye, is also smooth muscle. So we contract it, it makes our pupil smaller, not really moving a substance there. Uh, muscles are also used to maintain our posture. So muscle contractions are gonna oppose the force of gravity. This allows us to remain upright, and those tendons of those muscles are gonna help stabilize joints. Uh, we also use muscles to control body openings and passages, right? So giving us voluntary control of urination, defecation. Uh, obviously, uh, we also use or muscles for communication. So facial expressions, body language, stuff like that. All right, let's take a look at, oh, she's giving us different facial expressions. All right, so let's take a look at the general anatomy of skeletal muscles. So let's take a look at muscle attachment. So when a muscle contracts, like what we're seeing here, a contraction of the biceps brachii, when a muscle contracts, one of the bones that muscle is attached to is gonna remain fairly stationary while the other bone moves. So in this flexion here, this biceps brachii uh, is moving the forearm where the other point of attachment, the scapula, is really not moving. So the part that doesn't move is known as the origin. This is the end of the muscle that attaches to a relatively immovable part. And so the biceps ha has two origins, and those are found up there on the scapula. Uh, next uh, is the belly. And so not all muscles have a belly, but the biceps brachii does. And this is a thick mid-region of the muscle. So that's the belly right there. Next is the insertion, which is down here. The insertion is the end of the muscle that attaches to a movable part. So this is attaches to the radius and the radial tuberosity. So, you know, we contract the biceps brachii, that's gonna get our forearm to move upwards. Uh, let's take a look at arrangement of fascicles. So fascicles are groups of muscle cells, all right? So the first is called orbicular or circular. These are fascicles are arranged in concentric circles. So concentric circles are where you get smaller and smaller circles. Or another way to look at it is you get larger and larger circles, all right? So these surround, and so this is showing an orbicular muscle, uh, so these are going to surround external body openings. So sphincters are orbicular. Uh, also, like around our eyes, around our mouth, we have those orbiculars. Uh, oris around our mouth, orbiculars. Oculi around our eyes. Uh, next is uh, convergent. So uh, the pectoralis major here is showing a convergent. So this is where a muscle has a broad origin and its fascicles converge on a single tendon or insertion. So broad origin here, single uh, insertion, okay? Uh, so the pectoralis major is uh, an example of one showing conversion. Next is straight or parallel. This is a muscle in which the fascicles run uh, parallel to the axis of the muscle. So we see this with the rectus abdominis. So all of those um, fibers are moving in the same direction there. All right, so yeah, the rectus abdominis. Uh, next is fusiform, uh, so uh, the biceps brachii shows fusiform. This is muscles with an extended belly. They're thicker in the middle, um, thinner on the edges there. All right. Uh, lastly is pennate, so we'll go back to this picture here. So pennate is where the muscles in the fascicles, uh, fascicles are short and attach obliquely. And we see that here. So this is a unipennate, here's a bipennate, here's a multipennate, okay? You might notice this next time you go to Six Flags and you get a turkey leg, right? Because, I mean, who doesn't get a turkey leg at Six Flags, right? You'll notice that a lot of those muscles on that turkey leg are going to show that uh, pennate uh, uh, style there with their fascicles.